of America. At about this time of year, in the good old days, peaceful Britain had but one worry. Who's going to win the national? Even last year, we contrived to turn our thoughts away from war towards entry. This year, although there's no grand national, it's quite a relief to revisit the scene of so much sporting excitement and to enjoy all over again the biggest thrills produced at entry during the past six years. Already famous for always winning at Cheltenham and having won the National in 1934, Golden Miller was the obvious choice of the average punter in 1935 and started a hot favourite. But do you remember how he and Jerry Wilson parted company? That, and after a bit of a battle between Thurmond II and Reynoldstown, victory went to Reynoldstown. Next year, Golden Miller again held popular fancy, and many thought Miss Dorothy Paget's horse would make amends, though the actual favourite was Avenger. This was a race full of most unhappy landings from the very first jump. Valentine's, and the sort of picture that makes a racing motorist rush out and buy a horse. Then two sensations. Golden Miller was pulled up and walked home, and the fall of the favourite. That crash put a lot of money in the bookies' pockets, but remember how David Jones sprang a third sensation? A broken rein stopped him being put at the last jump, he ran round it, and so it was left to Reynolds down to come home an easy winner, being the third horse ever to win two years running at Aintree. Coronation year and a royal entry. Royal Mail was heavily backed, but Golden Miller was once again favourite in spite of past misfortune. This is Valentine's again, of course, and the big sensation of the race occurred two fences later when Golden Miller refused. The very same jump which he declined to take the year before. A bad show. There he is on the right. Royal Mail was the winner with Cooleen second and Drim, the loose horse, doing his best to spoil the finish. Lou Shirt was favourite when the field of 36 was sent away. <laughs> Ergyard Schies led at the canal turn, but that's not the story. 1938 is famous for its fighting finish between the Irish horse, Royal Daniele, and the American entry, Battleship. This is how Alan Harland felt about it at the time. From now on, it's an Irish-American battle. Two Irish horses lead, Royal Daniele and Workman, whose jockey has lost his cap. Battleship, the smallest horse ridden by the youngest jockey, is a close third. Workman is tiring, and it begins to look like Royal Daniele's race. But in the run-in, Battleship closes on Royal Daniele, stride by stride. Critics said before the race that he was too small, but here he is on the left, neck and neck with his rival. And few but the judges can separate the two as they near the post in a terrific finish. It is Battleship that wins the most thrilling national in years. Bruce Hobbs was only 17 when he won the national on Battleship. There were new tote machines to take the money, the favourite and others walked calmly round in the paddock, and then the field of 37 were off at the first attempt. Beaches Brook, the world's most notorious jump. 
Raul Danieli came to grief here, bringing down another horse and rider in his fall. The rest of the field made no mistake. Even if you were there in 1939, you couldn't have got this impression of the water jump. Though the favourite was well up here, he wasn't there at the end. That was a tremendous duel. This is how Movie Tone described the finish. Tim Hyde keeps Workman just in front. But it's obviously going to be a matter of stamina, barring accidents at the last jump. Over the final fence, neck and neck, but Workman shows a clean pair of heels to McMuffet in the run-in. Having jumped like a stag all the way round, he goes on to win by three lengths. A wartime Grand National, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? And one owner, Private Gordon Roll, now reported a prisoner of war. The Jones brothers on leave to ride in the race. And the last few moments before the 30 runners set out on their four and a half mile chase over 30 difficult jumps. It was a very open race last year, as you may remember, but the field was steadily being thinned out. That's Red Freeman crashing at Beaches the second time around, and at the last fence but one, down went the favourite, Royal Danieli. Then the race became a fight between McMoffat and Bogscar, with Bogscar's jockey, Mervyn Jones, turning on the tap at the right moment to win. A victory by a horse that started at 25 to 1. When's the next national? <laughs>